Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We have moved into the new place where we're merging the streams of sports, and the Ravens are pretty good, and the uh, new world of uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Brandon Scott and all the things that are going on uh, in our country right now and in Baltimore right now. It has been a while since I visited with this guy. Long-time medicinal health insider and my friend and helping me and my family with all sorts of supplements and my hip hurts and this hurts and that hurts. Brian Sandroff is back on uh, and it's, it's been a little while. I, I, I've noticed that it looks like you haven't shaved since the pandemic began. <laughs> now, you know, my hair's getting long, right? So, I mean, I, 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 I've got my 90s hair back here. I'm going to call Brad Pennington to cut it off again. Yeah. Um, how are you, man? How's pandemic life? It looks like you lost your razor at the very least, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing good, man. It's, uh, it's all good. Um, yeah, we don't get out much. My, uh, my fiance works in the healthcare world. And so because of the potential for her exposures and, and with her patients and everything, we, we, we say to ourselves pretty good. So working from home for the most part, doing our thing, obviously not getting the hair or the beard cut, but we're going to work on that. My wife and I are uh, finding recreational parks in the area. We drove up to Hartford County and we did a little gunpowder tour. We, uh, mm -hmm. we did a little Centennial Park uh, down in Howard County. Uh, shout out to Calvin Ball. Uh, so, yeah, we've been moving around a little bit. Um, I usually roam through uh, baseball parks and football parks and that sort of thing this time of year. So I guess we're all changing things. The vote last week was fascinating on a lot of levels, right? So we could talk about Biden, we could talk about Trump, we talk about red and blue and purple and states and the Electoral College and Senate votes and Georgia. We can get all those pol politic things, but around the country, the industry that you've moved into recently, the cannabis industry um, and legalization of marijuana throughout the country has become, you know, it, it's a sidelight. You don't hear about it till 15 or 20 minutes into the news. But based on where the country is and where we were at the turn of the century, politically, it is an astonishing turn for our country from Jeff Sessions saying only bad people smoke marijuana to where four more states legal that last, legalized it last week. Yep. I, you know, I want to bring you into this because your background was not in selling, uh, distributing, uh, or, or educating about cannabis. This is a new thing for you, but you come at this and that's why I love talking to you about this, because you were like a pharmacist for a long, long time, went to Maryland, all of that stuff. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, you know that I've been doing my work in understanding the toolbox that people can use to be able to help themselves thrive health wise. Right. And so it's not just pharmaceuticals, it's herbs and nutrients and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I did my radio show. I worked. I've been working in that world for 25 years now. And about three, a little bit more than three and a half years ago, I started working in the cannabis industry. So I was, you know, the clinical director and ran a dispensary for probably the biggest uh, company in the state and um, have completely immersed myself in that. Cannabis What's is been interesting to you about it? Like, like for someone out there who's 52, 65, 29, whatever. Mom and dad told us not to smoke pot. We, you know, we, we watch Reefer Madness at night. Uh, the cops told us. Nancy Reagan told you know, like all of our lifetime. So to say there's a stigma to it would not even do the conversation justice, correct? Yeah, I, th I think that's really changing. And obviously, as you mentioned, the vote, you can see that I forget what the number is, some 70 or 80 percent of Americans think that cannabis should be available for people. And it is a very, very powerful medicine. The ingredients that are in cannabis get the body to normalize function on every level. Recently, NIH came out with a statement saying that the endocannabinoid system, which is the system of receptor sites in the body, is responsible for probably 98 percent of human disease one way or another and so it's being recognized the studies that are going on around the world and you know the clinical um the clinical results that we see with patients are just fantastic it's not going to be a panacea for everybody someone has ms it's not going to cure that ms is it going to make their life dealing with ms much more tolerable no question about it is it going to potentially slow down the progression no question about it. Nestor, we have a couple of patients that are autistic that before using cannabis were nonverbal who are now verbal. 
that sort of change. That's just, powerful. Whew. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Think about the change in that person's life. I have dozens of patients who are off of their opioids because of using cannabis. And the kicker is cannabis is completely safe. It is literally, you cannot die from using cannabis. And again, I always say that's not to say that someone didn't get really high and jump off a bridge because they thought they could fly. But from the actual cannabis, you cannot die. The receptor sites that control breathing, uh, the area of the brain that controls breathing, the receptor sites for the cannabinoids, they aren't there. And so you really can't overdose from it. Brian Sander office here. You know, I, I want to read your old company, but you have a new company now. So I'm going <laughs> to yeah, let you tell everybody about what you're doing around here. You've been a frequent visitor here and uh, keeping us informed on stuff. And, you know, I have a wife who's a cancer survivor. I have um, a sister-in-law who's an MS patient. Uh, you know, I, I've had other people in my life with all sorts of uh, issues that, over the last couple of years, getting a card, getting legal, getting right with the state. But more than that, there are shops everywhere now. You know, I used to come back from Denver and, uh, you know, have a laugh with you about all the little green plus signs I saw, you know, <laughs> up and down uh, Colfax when I go out there for a Broncos game or go out there for a concert or whatever. Yeah. We're seeing that now up and down Bel Air Road, New York Road, and Harford Road, and, you know, into the counties and in areas. And, you know, my, my, my pal down in Pasadena has shops. So, Knowing all of that, knowing that it's pretty easy to get a card, pretty easy to get access to it, right? Then there's, well, this stuff's expensive, and what do I do? And I thought there was just two types of weed, or I thought there was this, you know, I, I didn't know there was this. Oh, my God, we have, we, we, you, you, can, you can ingest this now? Is it, what's a volcano? What's a, all of these thoughts. Yeah. But then there's what does this do to you and how – can for, for the money you're spending, the, what you're trying to get a result, a positive medical result, you need something more than just a card in a shop, right? Yeah, no question about that. There's a lot of information to understand. There's tons of different choices, and you need somebody to help you find those choices. You also need somebody who's looking at your history, in particular, your prescription medicines, because there can be interactions. And so those things need to be monitored properly. And there are people who want to get treatment, but they don't want to get that head effect that you can get from getting too much THC. And so there are ways to dose and there are uh, different dosage forms to use that can help alleviate that. And so my problem with the industry now, you, you've been out to the shop that I you know, built and trained the staff in. You know how they work there. It doesn't work that way in all of the dispensaries out there. And it's the same thing for the certifying practitioners. There are certifying practitioners out there that are really happy to take your money and give you your card and then pat you on the butt and say, okay, have fun. And that's not the way that we want That's to not do. a doctor. That's a dealer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, or, yeah. Or a uh, facilitator for the dealer. But um, so our practice, and it's called Hempel Sandroff Wellness Center. So we're located in Nottingham, just a little bit north of Perry Hall. There's no Nottingham. It's Perry yeah, Hall. It, it's on my address, man. I saw, it was on my address when I lived in 36, <laughs> and I asked somebody to find Nottingham or even West Nottingham. I mean, other than the post office, I mean, we called that White Marsh or Perry Hall. We, Nottingham. Or Kingsville. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, so we have our practice. And so my partner, Carrie Hempel, is a physician, and she does certifications. And we do consultations with people together. And when you do a certification with Carrie, it's not, okay, 15 minutes and you get your card. It's an hour of wanting to know everything that's going on with your health-wise, uh, you, your family history, the prescription medicines on, your experience with cannabis, what your, you know, what your tendencies are, what your desires are, what kind of dosage forms you want to use. Then she will, you know, we'll figure out what dispensary a patient is, wants to go to in their area or whatever. And she'll get on that dispensary's menu to see exactly what they have on stock, in stock to be able to recommend exact products for that, pe that person, that patient. Then we expect feedback from that patient. We want that patient to call us back and say, hey, I used it, this is what happened so that we can adjust dosages or we can adjust dosage forms or we can adjust products to make sure that people are getting the results that they're looking for. And from an, as an insider in this industry for the past three and a half years, that is a process that I do not see happening the way it should be. And I, you know, I'm, I'm all about the alternative stuff and I'm all about making sure that we're uh, using proper medical guidance to help people use this medicine appropriately.
well, this thing's just come on like, you know, like a tidal wave, right? I mean, I guess across the country over the last 10 years, yeah. and we talk about the politics of it, what happened last week in various states, that no one really knows, right? Like, I mean, I guess we're, we're it's such a new industry. People are trying different things. Here, try this. See how that, how did that make you feel? Did this work? Did that work? But there's science at work here that I would say a large percentage of people are just sort of, taking the name off of the product or taking a left side or a right side or a middle side and saying, yeah, that's good enough, but not really sitting down and having a full medical evaluation in the way that anybody else would, especially for the amount of money they're spending too, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. The, the money is, is a big part of it. This there stuff. is no inexpensive product here, right? There, well, there, you know, I, I guess that's a relative term and because all of this is out of pocket, nobody's insurance pays for it. It feels different, but you know, I would say with a with a typical cannabis naive patient, that's the term that we use in our industry for people that don't have experience using cannabis, um, who is, maybe is older. They can probably ex- expect to spend a hundred, one hundred and fifty dollars a month on their medicine. I think that that's reasonable. There are some of my patients who use much higher dosages of things, and they can spend up to a thousand dollars a month. I have patients who have been smoking their weeds since their since the 60s who have gotten educated and found that they can get a much better effect by using things in a very specific way and end up saving a ton of money that way as well brian sanderoff is here he's been my friend for a long long time uh, originally in the pharmaceutical space now in the cannabis space and certainly in the education space to say if you are a patient considering it find out how to use it better. And that's the space that you've gone into. This is a new place, right? Like there, there's not a whole lot of people you can call um, that are studying this in this way, the way you are. You're, you're trying to zig and zag into a new direction here, right? Yeah, yeah, no question about it. And one of the things that you said earlier that, uh, you know, always sparks interest in me was you talked about this is a new industry. We have to remember that this is an industry and it is a potentially very lucrative industry. And anytime that happens, there's always the possibility that there's that conflict of interest between what's best for the patient and what's best for the pocketbook of the, of the people that have the power in the industry. And I'm starting to see that happen even in Maryland. And so, well, it's no know, different than when the old days you take your car into the shop and they'd say, ah, you know, you need a pan for this and a plug for that. And a, you, you, you know, like that. And you never know. I always kid with my pal, Billy Cole. I'm like, you know, Nobody really knows what's up on the roof now. He's like, oh, no, we have video and pictures now. <laughs> well, but, but, but people are, uh, other than, than your own personal experience with using uh, cannabis, to, to actually have a resource to turn to, somebody to call that's not, you know, the guy down the street to say, hey, let, let me come in and sit down and tell you what I need because I am spending money on this. I am spending time on this. I do want it to work. I do want it to help me. And this isn't something that a lot of people go to their primary care doctor and, and bring up, right? Oh, absolutely. Just the opposite. You know, just like it was in the herbal world 20, 25 years ago, a lot of people are reluctant to tell their doctor what they're doing because they know they're going to be judged. And that's changing and more physicians are becoming uh, more accepting of this as they see more and more people asking it, but there still are a lot of uh, misconceptions in the medical world about what cannabis is, the science that's behind it, all that kind of stuff. I actually teach a course at Johns Hopkins. We had the second lecture last night. It's called Medical Cannabis 101. It's 12 hours, six lectures, and um, uh, it's part of their Odyssey program. And the interest in even the healthcare practitioners that take this course is really cool. You can see that the interest is rising in that. Well, where would a doctor who went to school in the 80s or 90s or even the aughts, you know, like have had a class on cannabis other than watching Reefer Madness or something, right? Like for most of our society, for most of our life, this was just not something that you looked up on the internet or you bought a pot book at some funny store or you read High Times or whatever. But the scientific part of this, and you know, I always bring up to you Sanjay Gupta and uh, and CNN and the legalization first in Colorado, Washington, California, starting West, that this now last week, again, with with all the other oxygen not in the room with Trump and Biden, this this would have been a big deal in a normal place that four more states went. And I don't know how many states are that it, it now is, but 
it feels very, very inevitable, right? Like that the whole country will be legal and, and then there will be lots of folks like you trying to educate people to make sure they're not, everybody's going to look for a better resource, I think. I, I think so. They should be. I mean, some people not, right? Some people are just now going to drive up to New Jersey because they just approved adult use where you don't have to have a medical card or anything and they'll, you know, they'll get their, their cannabis. But, you know, for me, I want people to use it in a guided manner. That's what our work is about, is understanding it. And I can tell you that in all the work that I've done, Nestor, we've known each other a long time and you've heard me talk about herbs. You've ter- heard me talk about nutrients. I can tell you without a doubt that what we're learning scientifically about the cannabinoids and how they work in the body, the most important discovery for health that we could possibly imagine. And I will also tell you that the 80 or 90 years of prohibition that went on in this country is partly responsible for the deplorable state of health that we have in our country, especially for the advancement and the, the money that we have in this country. Our health doesn't mix. And the reason is, is because of that, you know, 80 years of prohibition that started in the 30s. The craziest thing is banning a plant. Like that, that, like, you know, I've always gotten to the, to the, to the root of that. And I've always found that to be a fascinating political discussion in this country 90 years ago, right? Like it really is. And, and when you look and at Nixon, it, you know, and Nixon after the sixties, I mean, after, when, after, when you, after, when you look at schedule one, all of that stuff, it's, yeah, it's a fascinating political conversation, let alone a medical conversation. It is, but well, you're going back to the thirties and uh, you know, the uh, marijuana stamp act, which basically made it illegal. And at that time, the AMA went to Congress and said, no, you shouldn't do this. This is a legit, legitimate, medical product that we use with our patients and you know of course there were political reasons why they did what they did and um you know that that's all behind us it doesn't matter but i can tell you that for sure the state of health that we have in this country right now is related to the fact that this was not available for people to use for that period of time there's no question about that in my mind Brian Sander, I've been my friend a long time. He's got a new business, uh, and uh, they're doing wellness in the cannabis space. And as uh, tell me where to find you and, and give you a call and say hello. We'll be hearing more about you through the holidays and uh, getting into 2021 now that you've got your new shop almost set up. Yeah, yeah, a couple of things. So the office is set up, but you know we're really not doing work in person. All of the cannabis work this day, these days, gets done remotely. So if people just are, like this, just <laughs> like this, exactly. So if people want to, except for we use a HIPAA compliant, you know, secure connection for those conversations. I um, don't care who hears you and me. You know. Yeah, there you the go. The more, the merrier. Right. Um, so uh, uh, if people are interested in getting certified or recertified. Um, and want that guidance, you know, all they have to do is call the office. We're getting our website set up now. The website is hswellnesscenter.com. And probably by the next time you and I talk, it'll be open um, uh, and available. Until that time, people can call our office. And the phone number is 443-588-8984. And they can call the office, make an appointment. We're usually good about getting people in, you know, fairly quickly. We always reserve time on our schedule for people that feel an urgency and need to have that process done, you know, right away, especially if it's a recertification. Um, uh, uh, We also, I have a virtual dispensary. And so literally there's 40,000 products that are available to people at a discount. And that also is going to be available through your website and through your, you know, health positive uh, space there. And so before long, there'll be a link for people to click on. One of the things I like about that dispensary is, is that we're able to set up protocols. And so let's say we have a listener who um, has prostate issues and they want to know what supplements to take. Well, first of all, they're always welcome to call me and I'm happy to do a consultation with them, but they can click on that button. They can click on the protocol section. They can hit prostate and it'll tell you exactly what to take, how to take it, make it easy to order. And these are products that are the higher quality products that you and I have talked about for years. And these are the products that are usually only available through health professionals and we're making them available for, you know, your crowd as well. Is there something different between what you've done and what someone could have gotten at the mall at GNC? And I guess when you're talking about ordering on the internet, like I'm always afraid of ingesting various things that I order on the internet in all sorts of ways. I'm not a, uh, a conspiracy theorist, but I often do wonder, you know, I mean, just 
product to product. Um, you know, I do, I, I take a hydrate product that I trust because it's worked for me for two and a half years. And my pal, Brian Baldinger recommended it. I buy it. I'm not really sure what the hell's in it. Right. I mean, I, right. I sort of trust it and trust that it's working, but whenever I move to a new product, I'm always, you know, is, is, is this the Rolls Royce of this product? Where is it? Who's making this product? What's in this powder? Uh, and I've been around the NFL and players long enough to know dirty P tests, certainly at that level. Um, but these products, when you say a higher level, what does that mean, Brian? So it's funny. Neither you nor I drive a Rolls Royce, Royce, right? And I know that, you know, we're conscious of where we spend our money and we want to save money where we can. But you and I don't drive a Pinto either waiting for someone to hit us in the back. But I the also way. know the difference between an organic strawberry and a regular strawberry, right? Like literally, right. I, I know that I can feel the difference, taste the difference. I know when it rots quicker, all of that, right? So... I'm sure that there is a, a very equal – I know the lettuce I get down at the farmer's market is better than what, I, than what I can get at the, at, at the mall, right? So, and you can taste the difference. I, I don't taste the difference in a, uh, in, a supplement, you know, yeah. in a supplement, right? I mean, but I know there is a difference. There has there to be. There is no question about it. And so all the products that are available through this virtual dispensary are, uh, are made by companies that uh, use pharmaceutical – industry like standards in their production of the products, meaning that they use good manufacturing practices. There are independent testing to prove that what's on the label is actually in the bottle. And that is not the case with necessarily what you get off of Amazon. Uh, a patient explained it to me one time. He said, you know, if you want to use the oats after the cow does, you can. But if you really want the good oats, you might have to pay a couple pennies more for them. Meaning not after the cow has eaten them. Right. There you go. I like that. I once heard a story about a civet and a coffee bean, but that's a long story. Brian Sanderoff is here. Uh, he is HS Wellness, and they're new, but uh, you can find them, 443-588-8984. Brian will be hanging around here talking about cannabis and wellness and supplements and uh, uh, getting into the holiday season here. I hope you uh, stay safe. I hope you don't shave. You know, this new look for you. I uh, like it. Is, is there an end to it? I mean, is it like a Stanley Cup thing where at some point you'll raise the, the cup and, and shave or no? I don't know. If it were me, I probably would. But Carrie says she likes it. And you know what we do for the women in our lives, right? Yeah, I'm letting my hair grow, too. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm only doing it because it's a pandemic and nobody's looking at me anyway. I mean, I don't know that we're all going to leave the house much over the next three or four months. <laughs> it's going to be uh, say, Stay safe. Wash your hands and uh, wear a mask. And uh, we'll continue to stay in touch and try to keep people well. Thanks, Brian. That sounds good, Ness. Brian Sanderoff, my longtime pal, joining us here talking all things of health and wellness and cannabis and 443-588-8984. I can get you in touch with Brian as well. All that we're doing out at Baltimore Positive is there. We're still doing football. We're still waiting on Terps. We're still waiting on baseball. We're still talking baseball. Luke and I talked baseball earlier this week. But lots and lots of other things we're doing in the Baltimore Positive space. I hope you Check out our new website. Drop me a line. Ness at BaltimorePositive.com. All of it brought to you by all of our incredible sponsors, including our friends at Cole Roofing. I'm, sometimes I'm wearing the hat. Sometimes I'm holding up the mug with the Royal Farms coffee inside. Also, our friends at Sport of Culture. I got my magma lamp back here. We're trying to track down Court to get him on talking about winter flowers as well as uh, winter novelties. Sportaculture.com. They've been supporting us a long time. I am Nestor. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore, positive.